land of Umuofia was home to some of the greatest warriors to have ever lived. The community itself was prosperous and a very proud one, full of rich traditions. They were feared by all of their neighbors. Nobody wanted beef with these people. Whenever they would go to war, some of them came back with the heads of their enemies. Now, in this village, we meet a man named Okonku. His background is not one to be envied. He literally came from nothing. His father, Unoka, was the opposite of a great man. He was lazy and had little to no possessions. Compounded by the fact he was deep in debt. Mshwari, KCB, Tala, he had taken all of them and even thrown away his SIM card. To add insult to injury, Unoka died from swelling, which was considered an abomination to the land. So he could not be buried among his tribesmen, but rather thrown into the evil forests. This is the situation Okonku is coming from. Despite all of that, Okonku was able to make something out of his life. And not just something, but became a wealthy man, a respected warrior. He got to a position where he was able to marry three wives and could provide for the whole family. That is the type of man Okonko was. Because of the bitterness he felt towards his father, he was determined to raise up his sons to be real men. He hated weakness and lazy men, whom he had referred to as women. He was a bit too prone to violence and ruled his house with an iron fist. Okonko has a son called Noe. He tries his best to raise him to be strong. He even beats him when he detects a hint of weakness. Now one day news comes to the clan that men from Baino, a neighboring village, have killed a girl from Umuofia. This did not sit well with the people of Umuofia. And trust me, the people of Baino were sweating buckets. Fortunately for them, Umuofia did not wage any needless wars when a peaceful solution could be found. Okonko is sent as emissary, and Omofia demand a girl from Baino to replace the one who was killed, and a boy whose fate will be decided. This boy is called Ikemefuna. Okonko is to take care of the boy. The boy is at first confused as to why he was taken from his family, but eventually adjusts and integrates into Okonko's family. He particularly becomes very close with Nwoye, Okonko's son. Okonko also becomes very fond of him although he never shows it, because Ikemefuna becomes a sort of a mentor to Noe, and he can see Noe is maturing as a result of Ikemefuna's influence. Now, after three years, one day a village elder comes to see Okonko. He tells Okonko that it has come time for Ikemefuna's death. Okonko tells Ikemefuna that he is being taken home, so they begin the journey. After traveling for some time, Ikemefuna is ambushed by the man. He tries to run towards Okonko for help, even calling him father. But Okonko is no hero. He cannot go against the tribe. He deals the final blow and Ikemefuna dies. So basically, Okonko is the one who kills Ikemefuna. For the next few days, Okonko is troubled. He's even unable to eat. He wonders why Ikemefuna's death has affected him so much. He's the manliest of men. Stuff like that should not even affect him. He shouldn't be phased at all. His best friend, Obirika, has a daughter who is getting married soon. Okonko attends dowry negotiations. It is through speaking with Obirika and occupying his mind with customs and other things that he is able to return back to his normal state. Just as he's able to get back to a normal sleep routine, he is woken up early in the morning by his second wife, Ekwifi. His favorite child, Ezinma, who also happens to be Equifi's only child, is very ill. Now, the story of Equifi is one of sadness. Equifi had not had much luck when it came to children. She had born ten children, and out of the ten, nine had died. It was believed that she used to give birth to a wicked child, who after dying would return to its mother's womb to be reborn and die again. Such a devilish child wanting to cause the mother grief every single time, every single time. Now this is the tenth child. It was almost like a curse. But it seemed as Zinma was going to live long, for she had taken part in a ritual that would sever the link. Equifi was still very worried though, as Zinma was her only hope for living. Now Okonko gathers herbs and prepares medicine for his daughter. 
she eventually regains her health. Time passes and things aren't going too bad for Okunku and his family. His buddy Obirika's daughter gets married and they have this huge ceremony. Okonko is very involved in everything since he is good friends with the Obirika. One day, the village crier, this is the guy who breaks news of death, announces the death of Ezedu, one of the great elders of the tribe. Because of his prominence, there was going to be a huge ceremony for his funeral. There's a lot of dancing at the ceremony. And the men, like it's custom for them to do, are firing their guns in the air. Okonko is one of those men. Now, Okonko, as much as he was such a great warrior and everything, he was not the most skilled marksman. This was an area he was very poor at. He was no Yasop. His gun explodes, and as a result, leads to the death of one of Ezedu's sons. Yes, Okonko accidentally kills the son of the man they had gathered together to say farewell to. This incident leads to Okonko going into exile. He has to be away from the clan for seven years, as that, that is the tradition. Because it was an accident, he still has to go and stay away for seven years. It's sort of like penance. He packs his belongings, takes his yams to Obirika, and has to say goodbye to the place he has called home for so long. Well, at least till his exile is over. He decides to go to Mbanta, his mother's homeland. One of his uncles, Uchendu, takes him in and helps him adjust. He tries to encourage him and tells him to avoid falling into despair. Okonkwe is becoming a bitter man at this point. Everything that he has worked his whole life for, all the titles he was to be honored with, now seemed like a pipe dream. During his time in exile, his friend Obirika visits him once in a while. One day he comes with news of a neighboring village that was wiped out by the white man. Okonko thinks that the men of that village were fools because they hadn't prepared for war. No man should ever be caught like that. Nothing of the sort would ever happen to Omofia, the land of the warriors. That's what he, Okonko thinks to himself. Soon after, the white men make their way to Mbanta. Okonko doesn't think much of them and the new religion they've brought. That's until one day he finds out his son, Nuoye, has joined this new faith. Okonko is filled with rage and almost strangles Noye to death. He disowns Noye and grows very animous towards this new religion. He feels very unlucky. Why did he have to get such a weak son? He wants it destroyed. He doesn't understand why the clan is not taking action. His seven years of exile are coming to an end. He prepares to go back to Omofia. He is very excited. He might be able to get his position in the clan back. He will be in the presence of real men who don't cower in the face of new threats. Little does he know that Omofia is not the fortress he thought it was. The white man has brought with him not only his religion, but also a government that does not understand or respect the Igbo customs. The new government system uses African messengers to the court, called Kotma, to terrorize the locals. So basically, these are like the prefects back in school, how the, the administration would use them. Konko is disgusted by the state of things. This is not the home he remembers. Tensions continue to rise. Some members of the tribe have defected and joined the church. The tribe is split. Can a war really break out where our brother will raise swords against each other? Who will ignite the fire? The festival of the earth goddess, a festival where the masked ancestral gods roam around is taking place. It happens to take place on a Sunday and a scuffle ensues, caused by one member of the church. He unmasks one of the gods, which the Igbo believe has killed the god. This is a grave sin. This incident leads to the clansmen storming the church and burning it down. No one is more pleased by this event than Okonko. He wants more to be done. Unbeknownst to him, the enemy they face is one like never before. This is a ruthless one with no respect for their culture. Okonko and five other men are soon after imprisoned and have to pay a fine to be released. During their time in captivity, they undergo a lot of torture and humiliation. After their release, Okonko is filled with rage like never before. He has resolved in his mind that if the clan does not do anything, he shall enact his own vengeance. A meeting is held by the elders of the tribe to deliberate on what next. Okonko and Obirika are in attendance. As the meeting is going on, five court messengers appear and demand that the meeting be halted at once. 
Okonkwe is having none of that. Not today. He is a man on a mission. No looking back. Give me liberty or give me death. He strikes down one of the messengers with his machete. That's the call to action. The people should rise up now and kill the other messengers. But unfortunately, the rest of the clan are not as fired up as he is and they let the other messengers flee. Okonko walks away in complete disbelief. Of course Okonko's actions cannot go unpunished. The district commissioner shows up at Okonko's compound asking for Okonko to step forward. Obirika is there and he's in the company of other elders. He tells the commissioner that Okonko is not there. Has he fled? Obirika tells him that he will take them to where Okonko is. Maybe the commissioner's men might be of help to Obirika and the other clansmen. This sounds a bit odd to the commissioner. Where could Okonko be hiding that even the elders need some sort of help? He leads them through a path leading to a tree behind Okonko's compound. In front of them is one of the greatest warriors of Umufia, a man who had achieved almost everything just by sheer will. What went wrong for this man to reach this point in life, where everything has completely fallen apart? Behold, Okonko is hanging from a tree. Everything was too much for him to bear. He is a nobody now in the face of the tribe, an abomination to the land. Even his best friend cannot touch his body, hence why he needed the commissioner's assistance. Now Okonko will be thrown into the evil forest, just like his father. And that is things fall apart.